I've done dozens of React.js interviews at junior, mid, and senior level. In the process, I went from getting stuck with simple React problems to getting six-figure offers from several companies. All this while the job market is completely crazy. Today, I will share with you the seven most common React.js interview mistakes developers make that stops them from passing the interview and getting an offer. If you don't know who I am, I'm Bogdan, principal engineer and co-founder at The Senior Dev, where in the last four years, we helped over 250 JavaScript developers level up to senior and beyond. Now, the number one mistake is modifying state directly or mutating state directly. As you see in this example, I have a list state and I am modifying that array directly in the onclick handle. Handler. This goes against the React principle of immutability. State should never be changed directly. We should always compute a new version of a state and use the state update functions, these ones, to actually publish that update. When we do that, React will update the state, recompute the fiber for this component, finally compute the virtual DOM, and then follow the reconciliation algorithm to figure out the changes and commit them to the DOM. Always compute the new version of the state, as we do here, we see a computer new array, and then use the state setter to update that value. The second very common mistake is declaring a component inside another component. The problem here is that whenever my component gets re-rendered, list element gets redeclared. That means the whole element gets recreated. And that makes React believe that every time we re-render my component, the list element is a new one, which will cause a re-render of this whole list. If this would be a big list of thousands of items, we would have a very expensive and unnecessary re-render because again React believes this function is different for every render. It gets reassigned all the time. To avoid this, you want to always declare components outside, ideally even in a different file. This will make it extremely easy to apply optimizations like use memo and it allows React to really leverage all the internal optimizations that it applies to the virtual DOM. Number three, it's abusing the use effect hook. This happens when you have several state objects and you might want them to change in a chain effect. So when the user clicks on changing the color, I want to set the color to blue, but I also want to increase my counter. A natural way to do that is to attach an effect to color and say, well, whenever you change the color, also call set the count. The problem with this is that effects will run at the end of the re-rendering process. So basically React will recompute our changes, do the virtual DOM reconciliation, commit the changes to the DOM, and then run the effects. And then it will start over and doing an extra re render. This can be a huge performance killer. Effects should not be used for state updates like this, but rather calls outside the system, outside our application. Instead, you could actually run both state setters on click. Now, a lot of people might think this will also trigger to re-renders because we update state twice, but in reality, React will use the fiber tree to batch those updates and only trigger one re-render and commit once to the DOM. The fact we don't have an effect here means there is no re-render after the first render. It's just going to be one single render with a new state. So avoid use effect as much as you can and only use effects when you need to make a call outside the component, either that's in the backend or setting something in local state or cookies. You shouldn't use effects to chain state updates. Instead, trigger the state updates directly in the event handlers. And by the way, if you are interviewing right now, make sure you also take the free assessment we put together. This assessment contains dozens of real interview questions we've been collecting over the years, and it will give you a Good idea of where are your skills right now so you're better prepared for your next interview. Check the link in the comments to find out more. Number four, it's not using hooks at the top of a component. This one, it's very straightforward, but whatever you see React code, always put hooks at the very top. Never have something here. Hooks are the first thing that should happen in a component. This is one of the two rules of hooks, which if you're interviewing right now, make sure you review. And so basically every component should look like this, where at the very top, we have have all our different hooks, either that's context hooks, state hooks, or use reducer hooks, and then our event handlers follow. Number five, it's not having stable keys for your list items. Basically using indexes from arrays as a key item. This is a very obvious one. It's very well mentioned in the React documentation, but people still do it, especially in live coding interviews. The problem with this is that in order for React to have a fast reconciliation algorithm, React assumes that two elements are not the same 
same if they have a different key. What can happen is that whenever we change the list by removing an element, so imagine I have, you know, a couple of items, pa, 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 and I go ahead and remove this one, I remove this one, all the other IDs will change because all these elements might be shifted. In that scenario, React will consider that all the elements here have changed and the keys are what we call unstable and it will not be able to reuse any of it so it will re-render the full list. Instead, you want to use stable IDs, ideally from the backend for your list items. In this case, my backend data has IDs and I'm using that directly as a key. In this way, React knows which elements are still there and which ones have changed. So it will never re-render a component that didn't change, which makes it a lot more performant. Again, it's one of the most obvious ones, but be careful because I've seen so many people still mistaking this one, especially under pressure in live coding interviews. The next one, it's what I call ambiguous components. This happens whenever people tend to over-engineer their code and start creating components that might render different elements depending on a type prop. In this case, depending on the type prop, I might render a button or a link or a dropdown. The problem here is that all the possible props that these different elements might have separately are now together in a single interface which will be huge. This makes the component a lot harder to test because there's just so many more test cases. It also makes it much harder to understand what's going on, to onboard people on it and just adds a lot of complexity. The solution is to have individual components in individual files that are as small as possible, can be tested and used independently and can grow independently. This follows the single responsibility principle and the interface segregation principle from the solid principles. And if you were able to mention this, you'll really stand out as a top engineer. Finally, this is what I call consolidated context, which means we take different data that might change independently and that different components might not necessarily subscribe to and put it together in a single context provider. What will happen here is that number one, we're going to have a huge interface here, a lot of props. And so of course, everything is more error prone. Number two, whenever any of those context state changes, we will update everybody that subscribed to this. What I mean is if the notifications change, everybody that's actually using team and user will also re-render. Instead, you want to create different context and context providers. So we put teaming in one of them. We're going to have auth, for example, in another one, the user provider, and the notifications in another one. This gives components down the component tree the freedom to subscribe to either one or two, which means we will not have unnecessary re-renders because as a component now, I really only subscribe to the context I'm actually using, whereas in the previous situation, it was an all or nothing scenario. This will considerably decrease the number of unnecessary re-renders in your component tree and make the application much faster. Knowing these mistakes will make you perform a lot better in interviews, but if you really want to be ready for your next React interview, make sure you also check out this video and this other one where we dive deep into common interview questions in React to make sure you also nail your next interview. I'll see you there.